right, thanks for staying with us. The American dream is a national ethos of the United States, the set of ideals in which freedom includes the opportunity for prosperity and success, as well as an upward social mobility for the family and children. So what ethos does Nigeria stand by? What is our identity? To discuss this is none other than the catalytic thought leader and futurist, global influencer, Olakunle Shorion. Now remember, you can join the conversation, tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa one with the hashtag Waze, or send us a message or WhatsApp message to 0810-8038-4663. Now, Thank you very much for joining us. So Thank the you. first question, always a pleasure to have you here, Thank honestly. You. Same here. <laughs> the we'll first talk. question, um, what is our Nigerian identity? Um, it's, a, it's a question that um, I've been asked severally, mm -hmm. and I have to answer with some level of uh, depression. Depression? Oh. Yes. Okay. Wow, OK. Depression because, it, first of all, it doesn't exist. Uh, there's no Nigerian identity in the way that you like to think about it. Mm -hmm. There's no um, ideological class that binds us together as a people and that releases our sense of um, our collective peace, mm -hmm. our collective, that, that addresses the attention and resources our individuality deserves as a people. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. But we do have another identity by default because there's no such thing as zero identity. Okay. It's either you are in control of your identity, mm -hmm. therefore sending out positive signals that can unlock acceptance and uh, gratitude in society or in the world at large, mm -hmm. or you are sending out a wrong um, signal. But at every point in time, you are releasing a signal. So what signal are we sending out? So we, we pretty much communicate um, what I call nuisance value, hmm. Hmm. right? And it's not necessarily intentional. You know, people are sincerely in prison. People are sincerely poor. People are sincerely frustrated. There is a sense in which you can in initiate attacks against yourself. Um, just because of your level of ignorance or nescience. In this case, the Nigerian idea is completely um, unaware of the negative signals it throws out, right, based on how we celebrate ourselves, how we um, deploy, you know, our best level of intelligence, the way we understand it. You know, but what has happened to us is that we've built a reputation capital for ourselves that is uh, not working for our collective aspirations as a people, right? And I don't think it's a leadership problem, like everybody mm -hmm. likes to think. Oh, um, wow. Firstly, yeah. that is not a leadership so, problem. <laughs> I don't think it's a leadership <laughs> problem. Um, that's interesting that you say that. So yes. You finish. Yeah, because the idea of leadership problem is an escapist mentality as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. That is the easy way to think about problems nationally. Even um, at any level, we just like to think that the weight of our problem is coming from a source other than us. So blame an external factor. You know, so we hide from ourselves and hide from God by hiding under somebody as the architect of the weight of your pain. Like refusing to take the blame. Yes. So. so okay. Yes. All right, now, so I have a question. Okay, because, you know, it's interesting that he says, because automatically I just assumed that, you know, we can sort of chalk this to the leadership and, you know, the issues we have with, with our leadership. And just based on the definition of national identity, it's about patriotism and, you know, pride in your country and love and all of that. And, you know, why would I be proud of a country where the government has failed us and, you know, uh, certain things are not in place to enable me as an individual to thrive? You know, so how is it that you, you wouldn't blame the leader? I understand I have a role to play, but mm -hmm. I think significantly, you know, the leadership have a significant role to contribute. They contribute significantly to, you know, how we feel about our country. It's soothing to... <laughs> Think like that. that. You know, <laughs> it's really soothing. It, and, mm. and it makes sense, right? Except that you have to ask yourself, 
what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be correct or do you want to progress? Because of the difference between being correct and being progressive. For example, if you want to sit down on a chair and say Nigeria is not working, you are correct. PDP is not serious, you are correct. APC is useless, you are correct. Nepal needs to be pulled down, you are correct. The government is not thinking straight, you are correct. We don't have 24 power supply, the roads are bad, you are mm -hmm. correct. But how does all of that move you forward? How does that put money in your bank? There is a sense in which you can you know, be distracted from the focus of the problem and really face uh, another, um, another objective and convince yourself that you are solving the problem. And I'll give you an example before I come to this level of leadership. Who, uh, bring back our girls. It's a perfect example for me. Mm -hmm. um, some girls have been kidnapped based on the weak articulation in the Boko Haram camp. Because if they understood what it means to kidnap a girl or girls mm -hmm. in the 2000s, they would not have done that because it's not tactical for them. I'm not that I'm, I'm supporting Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying if the if this war room of Boko Haram were thinking. They shouldn't have kidnapped girls because girls have a budget. There's a global budget for mm, girls for now. Girl child, yes. The girl child, there's a global budget for women, there's a global budget for for girls. When you touch boys, it doesn't go viral. If you touch men, it doesn't go viral. Mm -hmm. But the world have chosen to celebrate, to, to women, celebrate more. women. And I respect that. So maybe that's exactly why they did it. So no, that's not why. Right. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, but when you look at it, uh, when you look at the overall strategy, you know, um, um, it, it, won't, it won't work for them, but it will give them a short run effect. And, I, and it, it did get that mm -hmm. because they got the attention of the whole world, yeah. right? And the press, the media, everybody played into that. The world as a whole played into that. I mean, Bring Back Our Girls was everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the distraction was that Bring Back Our Girls became a bigger Go mm -hmm. than defeat Boko Haram. Mm. The problem we had was not the kidnap of the girls. That is a result of something more complex. What is really complex is Boko Haram, the crisis. Mm. And if we take care of Boko Haram, the girls are free and the boys are free. Absolutely. If we if we free the girls, the the the, the Boko Haram is still probably we're still going to pay them money to do that. So that is a strategic distraction. I'll give you another one. In Syria, at the time, they were killing a lot of people. And then the guys in Syria were accused to be using chemical weapons. And the whole world wanted them to stop using chemical weapons. So America, the whole world, all the Western nations came out and said, stop using chemical weapons. Oh, we're going to attack Syria. We're going to come into Syria. In other words, I'm not really trying to stop your war. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to determine how you die. Hmm. So you don't have to use chemical weapons. You can use AK-47. You can use grenades. You can use RPGs. You can use any kind of weapon. Die in this particular way. If you choose to die in this way, I'm going to come and stop it. The people in Syria don't care whether it's a chemical weapon or it's a grenade. They don't yes, want war. Mm. So after a time, the distraction was um, stop using chemical weapon became bigger than stop the war in Syria. Mm. So right? So when you come to Nigeria now to apply that to our conversation today, the idea of leadership being our problem is also another strategic distraction, mm -hmm. right? It now, it's yes. not the problem. The real problem is what I put in a parable. I call it the parable of the raw eggs. You, raw, R-A-W. So you have a basket of raw eggs. Yes. About 5,000 eggs are in mm -hmm. the basket. Every four years, you have to pick four eggs randomly from the basket. Okay. to represent the entire basket in a frying pan. Right. You break the eggs into the frying pan, they are all rotten eggs. You were angry, displeased, you went to the basket again, you picked another four, four years after, mm. to represent the basket. You broke it into the frying pan, <laughs> all rotten eggs. You went there again four years after, and for 50 years, you have been going to this basket okay. to pick four eggs to represent the basket in a fry pan. And every time you break the eggs for 50 years, mm -hmm. they've been rotting eggs. So. They say to do the same thing every time and expect a different result is a part of insanity. insanity. Right? Mm -hmm. So part of that is that 50 years is a long time, enough 
for us to say wait. Could it be that the basket itself is a basket of basket rotting rotten eggs? eggs. Hmm. Such that it doesn't matter how many times we're going to be basket to, to pick, pick or, they will always be rotting eggs. So if we really want to solve the problems, we should not point fingers at the four eggs that okay. represent the basket. We should go to the entire basket and see how we're going to reinvent it. Because Nigerian leadership is not outsourced or imported. It's it is chosen us. from the Nigerian people. If we don't like the Nigerian leadership, we shouldn't like the Nigerian people. Hmm. It comes down to the Nigerian people. It says a lot about how we make choices. The average Nigerian does not know how to make a decision between good and better or better and best. I will explain. The average Nigerian makes a choice between good and bad, which is an easy choice. Any hmm. fool can make that choice or between bad and worse, like the last election, I'm sorry. So the idea is, if you, if you are asked, sorry, who will you, where would you like to work? ISIS camp or Zenit Bank? Where would you like to work? You Easy call. Bank. You yeah. don't need to think. Yeah, who do you want to marry? I'm Roba or Corista? Easy call, right? <laughs> any fool, <laughs> any fool can make that choice. Yes. But who do you want to marry? Deacon or Bishop? Becomes a problem. Where do you want to work? Zenit Bank? or access bank, it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Because now, you don't need to hear God's voice, you know. A lot of times they want to hear God's voice, what we mean is that the, what is confronting us is, is too complex for our, yeah. for our ignorance. Our because wow. the truth is, when you look at it, you are not making a choice between two good alternatives. The guys who chose between Obama and McCain must be understood, because both of them are good enough to be presidents anywhere. In the United States, we still have to choose one, right? That, if that tells you that type of people making that choice, right? It means they understand something. So at times when you see the quality of the candidates, it's a reflection of, of, these people. People. of the quality of the people. In the same way that the cover of a newspaper tells you the character and the thinking of the people in that country. Wow, so I have to bring us a back, please. Okay. We have had the problem and the basket, you know, full of eggs. Mm -hmm. So, what is the road to redemption? <laughs> What's the road to redemption? Because we've heard the story, the people are the problem, yeah. and you're right. It will always come from the people. We'll always choose ourselves. What is the road to but redemption? Really, sorry, before we get to the road to redemption, the people are the problem. And I'm not trying to jump into the escapist mentality, but let's talk about the ban. We'll get to redemption. No let's problem. talk about the ban for a minute. Now, um, I, according to um, um, research and what I read, that part of the reason Nigeria was banned was because of um, lack of access to security information on terrorism and all that, and also because Nigerians would travel on a visiting visa and they would refuse to come back. So why would the average Nigerian want to leave their country if it's not related to the government being somehow um, inefficient? You know... It's very easy for your car to break down and for you to, ask, to, to be told that it's your battery or it's some ignition or something. But that also is speaking to the, probably the age of your car, that maybe depreciation is catching up with you. Mm. When, I brand, when I buy a brand new car, it will go through many phases of depreciation but I know that I'm paying for a machine that will not stop without my permission. Right. You know what, I'm, I'm going to cut okay. you right there. Okay. <laughs> we will take a break. This is What Are You Saying? And we'll be right back shortly. Please stay with us.